I mean, we, ne we never got twins before as a team, you know, walking in. I mean, you know, we got twins in the classes. But that's our first twin that coming together and then uh, trying to be a team member. These two are, their seems very tight together. I like they, they showed their love to each other, support each other. They would talk. And then if the one don't do good, the other one cries. Very honest kids. And they're hardworking kids. They work together kind of kids and their supporting and commitment. I think the biggest thing is a commitment. Make them who they are today. Focus is not just each day to a thing to focus on their trick. I mean focus to for what they're doing, which is gymnastics. And that's what they set their mind for, and their love for, and they focus. They used to come to the gym on Saturday morning and cry for 15 minutes. And then it, it just standing on the beam and cried. So kind of after a while, we'll figure that out. It's as simple as they're just probably not used to. You know, kids learn their body differently. They probably haven't fully wake up yet. It's, it, you know, after a while, they thought that was just gone. But that really gotten me to don't yell at the kids when they cry because that might be nothing. It just has to get used to it. And when they will, then they just stop. That's how they begin when they start team. And another thing is these two twins, so they're very honest, very honest kids. But they're very easy to get distracted. When they're young, at least, they're so easy to get distracted. I remember I used to making them do beam basic kicks. So I'll say, you know, they're working with a group. So it's not just two of them, a group of kids. So I say, let's do uh, five sets of uh, 30 on each leg. When they do their kicks, so they go, you know, 25, 26, 27. Right on that moment, something maybe happened in the gym, like a big noise maybe, anything. And they, or somebody was talking kind of near them. And then they lost counting. So what do they do? Start from one, one, two. So every set, okay, here goes 12, 13, bam, something happened. Then they go, they got distracted. And they get back, they forgot it was on 13. One, two, and that's what happened. My solution ended up is, and never mind, just keep going, I'm gonna correct you. When the other kid's done, you're done. That was the cutest thing to me. So I always know, oh my gosh, these kids. <laughs> yeah, they make me laugh. You know, at that time I'm thinking, oh, how cute. Amy is more bubbly, stronger personality. Allison, Allison's old sister, the older sister. She's more, you know, subtle, doesn't go ups and downs that much. And she doesn't, you know, talk that much, she's more settled, like more in, keep it in. And Amy's more a little sassy. <laughs> yeah, that makes them different, but they always work together pretty good. They ended up go to the same school, and then, and you know, they both won, oh, they, I should say they both got a full right, it just won Amy's on uh, pending. So it's either this first semester or next semester. No matter what, I see this one thing. I think, at least I believe, that they always have gymnastics in their heart. They got to do this. Sophie has uh, been with us the longest. She probably have 12 years with us. She's happy about what she's doing. She's loving what she usually hate, she used to hate. That's the best ending of gymnastics that I think South Coast and we can give it to her. So she can carry that on to her future. It's, it's a kid with a lot of honor. Yeah, since she's little, she wants to be good. And she's talented, talented little kid. And then, you know, when she was young, uh, when she was level four, she was standout. And I remember when she competes, she got a lot of attention. One of these kids has a lot, a lot, a lot of potential. Very talented, but she's also the biggest chicken. 
She's starting to trust her body, trust herself, trust her mind. And most importantly is what she tells me is jaw. She tells me one day, I, I, I look at her, I can't not believe that's what she said. She said, jaw, I love beam. Oh my gosh, I love beam. And the last meet, the season of last meet, and she competed, and she hit, you know, she made all the events. Every event she went down, and when she raised her hands, it doesn't seem like she's nervous and all that. It seems like, I love this. I'm just gonna perform for myself, for my coaches, for my family. And that was the best meet of her. I think I can say, well, as a level 10, you know, her entire season. I, I'm just so happy for her, I think, yes, regardless you get in the medal, you're a champion or not, you made the best to prove yourself you can do this. You finally got it, you can do this. If you can do this, Sophie, you can do the other things in your life too. Because this is a challenge, this is not easy. And you learn to overcome all of these problems you fear and learn to love your fear and work through it. And that's what I'm talking about. I love to see that. And to the coaches, I think that's the biggest reward. I remember that when she was young, she won't let me hug her. You know, I thought that you, you, you were happy, you're good, you did well. Sometimes I want to hug her at the end of the workout. And then for some reason, no. So then I remember, I forgot it was either dad or mom told me, oh, don't mind, don't worry, and she doesn't hug us either, or don't let us hug her, it's just her, it doesn't mean, so, you know, I, I got it, and it doesn't mean that she doesn't love us, it's just, that's just her thing. So, you know, during all these years, I think starting last season, it was just randomly one time, we did well at the meet, and she came and ran over and gave me a hug. Yeah, it just, it reminds me that hug, it means so much. Yeah, it almost means more than to make her a champion. <laughs> April, yes, she does have a lot of potential to be great. And I hope she realized that and developed from here and to do well on the other areas in her life. April started when she's very young too, uh, with us. You know, amount of the whole group of kids, and you have to pick one kid, you say, I would love to work with that kid. It will be April when there is such a young age. She's such an angel. She's never talked back, never mess around, never had a bad attitude always nice to our teammates when the coaches give correction just knock head and say yes it kind of remind me of those traditional Chinese way to you know coaches say something yes she's one of these she just need to learn how to handle that pressure how to gain the confidence of course that you know sometimes it take kids really long take us really long even finish gymnastics, you still can work on that. When they're very young, they probably don't care that much because they don't understand how important the winning at right on that moment yet. They're there to have fun, you know. So they're, at that time, they might go for it. They might, they might not focus, learn to focus. But sometimes you put so much pressure, not everybody else give you, it's just yourself. You put the heavy pressure on yourself, you go, this is it, I all have, that's all I have. I better do good and then same as workout. She does that on the workout too. When, you know, like you, all you need is step up one more step to that level of trust. Yeah. And then you, you learn. It's, a, it's almost ability. It's ability. Because once you get it, and I think you, you mentally will process that again next time when you face a challenge or when you face a nerve breakdown. You would learn, you know how.
And then, you know, so we, we do that for our young children when they're facing problems like that. Try to teach them ability to learn how to face challenge. All of the gymnasts handle pressure pretty good compared to some of the kids don't do any sports. Because we all understand, look, sports is about winning or losing. Nobody want to lose. Even sometimes, you know, the kids all understand, I don't want, you know, I, I don't work too hard, but once I'm out there competing, I'm going to do really good. I'm going to put it everything, um, you know, at that day. But how are we going to uh, work through the pressures is basically, number one, is depending on the day and day and day workout. That's what you can base on to gain your confidence. If you can do nine out of 10, or if you can do it every day, that trick, you're most likely not gonna be too nervous at the meet. You're only nervous for the tricks that you're scared at home either, or you're not done enough, or you've never done it before. You're just hoping that it's just gonna do it at the meet. Of course you're nervous. So day in, day in, day in, you know, every day is normal. That's what we call homework. Compared to the competition, workouts are homework do your homework, you will have less pressure. She still worked through a lot of hard times, tough times, stress times. She didn't quit. She still carried all that and tried and trying to this day. Kelly is being with us the shortest of this year's uh, graduate kids. Uh, she's coming from another gym. What I'm very happy is, yes, she haven't been with us for long as, you know, compared to the other kids. But in the short time, we did experience a good success. She's silent, but she does have that toughness, you know, and she will do it. Sometimes when I watch her foot, when she lands on that beam, that bruise, it, it even hurts me. To get up there and do again, that need a lot of guts. I think she rises for the pressure. At least the last season, that's what it is. She prepared well. Last season, she prepared well. The workout was consistent. She was having a, a strong, confident walk into the season. So when, you know, when the competition season started, she sees the hard work pays off. She's actually performed in her three most important meets, which is state, state qualifies to regional, and regionals, regionals qualify to Western and Western. Each meet, she got better. When the competition levels raised, her performing increased too. She finished second place all around. Which is that means she's the best in the half of the country. So the competition got tougher. And she's also performing better. The hard work should pay off at the season in the competition. And that worked perfect last season. And it just shows her. I can see the confidence. She was fun. She was talk. She was, in, you know, like encouraging the the teammates because the, then there's a regional team, and that's you know she's representing our region. We're region one, so she's representing that. And I remember those like those faces are just sparkle. It's there's not much of nervous. It's just a moment of when I raise my hands, I'm concentrate, and that's the performance level that I would love to see every gymnast experience. You know, a lot of gymnasts don't even have a chance to experience, to experience a, such a season. And I think that's, that's fabulous because that's what I want her to remember. I'm not done with her yet either. I feel like, uh, give us a couple more years, we will, we'll get it. We'll do even better. Timmy, I think, Tim, Timmy is like uh, very special. That kid is very special. We don't, you, you know, I mean, he's almost like our kid. And this doesn't happen too often. You got a kid that they have to drive like over three hours, I say. Because we're in Irvine. You know, and then they're coming from a riverside. 
every day. Saturday too, weekends. So in Tim's story, we have to mention the family. Most of the family would just find somewhere near. And that is true because you also have all the kids, you have your business, you have life. It's a trust from the family and Timmy. I was just talking to Amy and um, Timmy's mom. I said, I'm so glad that Timmy finally won the national title on Palmer Horse. Because Palmer Horse is Xiaoping's, everybody say Palmer Horse is Xiaoping's event because that's what he has a title on the Olympic and the World Championships. So, um, you know, uh, and Timmy's every year, like, oh, we are almost there. And this is Timmy's last season. Yes, finally, he's first place on Palmer Horse. And I know how much that means to Xiaoping. I don't think it's just Palmer Horse. I think it's just because, you know, it's like, we didn't work in this. Finally. And it wasn't a gift. It's a solid three-day Palmer Horse and got Timmy the title. I know Xiaoping is happy. So I think that made him proud. It made him proud. And Timmy, of course, this is his third year become a national team member. Talk uh, Palmer Horse sixth place, top six and national. He competed two seasons with us. This is actually the first season that is complete that, um, you know, did all the way went to national. And then not just that, you know, it made a strong event, made it to the final and still finished sixth place on the Palmer horse. So uh, that probably buy him a ticket to get to um, um, NCAAs, and that's what he wants. We really wish we had a kid like this when they're younger. It just gives us more chance and more time to, to teach them more. I can't say better, but it might be different. Taka, in the same situation with Timmy, Taka lives in San Diego. Taka also has a, a younger brother, is a level five with us too, Tomo. Tomo's only like seven, eight years old, eight years old, I believe. And then what mom will do is to buy them a train ticket. So they take, she drives them to the train station and they take a train to uh, Irvine or Santana. And then mom will manage to have some of our parents to go pick them up from the station. Like I know Amy did it, Susan did it, you know, Dinah, or maybe some other moms did it too help to you know so they can be here at the gym and work out and then at night time and the, the train leaves that I remember used to be a 917 so yeah a lot of parents was involved to helping that and then when there's no one can do that then me and Xiaoping or Sunny we all we we, we all the drivers and I love to I have you know I'm like yes I'm glad that I can help. He said, I miss this whole gym, I miss my team, I miss this, I miss that, I miss the travel. It's a pressure to us. Not that I say pressure because they're giving us pressure, it's a pressure us to ourselves. Because you feel that, you know, we better make good plans, we make it good for these parents that trust in us, have hopes on us and the kids. For me, it's like uh, I paint a beautiful paint and uh, like we build up a, a, a beautiful car, like a Mercedes or some sort of beautiful car. We have a chance to from scratch to build up all the way to, to the top and uh, make it the best out of them.